All right, Sven, <laughs> he's doing his best impression of Carmen San Diego this morning. Where in the world? He's taken <laughs> along with staff from the Minnesota Zoo as they release more Dakota Skipper butterflies in western Minnesota. And Sven, you told us last week the butterflies are already extinct in Illinois and Iowa, so you're diving deeper into the issue now. You're live in Benton. That's in that's right. Yeah, these butterflies, the Dakota Skipper, used to be from Chicago, you would have seen them, all the way up through uh, Manitoba, covering that whole area. You know, much of Minnesota was prairie, Iowa, southern Wisconsin, and uh, much of Illinois, too. And, of course, the Dakotas up into the prairie provinces of Canada. But we've tilled a lot of that soil, changed a lot of that habitat. We only have about 1% or 2% of that native uh, prairie habitat left. And this is some of the last untouched prairie left here in Western Minnesota, because we're on the Buffalo Ridge. It's a pretty topographic area. If you look behind me, you see a lot of hills, rolling hills out here, a little different than what we see in the Eastern part of the state. And that saved some of this prairie because it was so hard to really farm and change the landscape here. But the Minnesota Zoo, along with the Nature Conservancy, is working with this piece of property to try to bring back the Dakota Skipper, which went extinct from this spot 10 years ago, but they're trying to bring it back. Take a look. One thing that's missing is just a basic contact with, with nature. It's one thing we're losing. A third of Minnesota used to be prairie, but only about one or 2% of that is left, maybe even less. And we're lucky to be here with uh, with the Nature Conservancy who's been doing a great job managing these last remnants. But the other cool thing, you know, with Nature Conservancy ground is it's open to the public for non-consumptive uses, but it's it's all open. It's intended for people to come out, walk, enjoy, see, see stuff, you know, make that connection with, with nature. So our goal is to release about 400 this year. We don't know if this is fully going to work. We've been reintroducing Dakota skippers here at this preserve and at this spot for now it's our third year. Yeah, about 800. And, and then is this the last year you're doing it and then you're kind of stepping back? And yeah, exactly. So since this has never been tried before, we decided to let, let's put as many as we can out over for three years and see if that's enough to get them to stick. And if we can still be finding them out here next year and the year after that, that's a good indication that um, they're not gonna need our help anymore. But we're, that's gonna be an evaluation process as we go along. And there's a lot of subtlety and a lot of small critters in our backyards that if we just took time and slowed down a little bit, there's, there's wonder anywhere you look. Prairies are full of it. Yeah, and obviously if you've been following me along, I go to Africa, you got the big animals there and the big habitats, but we kind of take for granted and overlook the prairie habitat that's full of hundreds of different species of plants and little creatures, insects that are all part of a bigger ecosystem. So if you like pheasant, if you like some of those birds that are part of the prairie, they all are a part of that ecosystem and really need uh, things like the Dakota skipper to survive. It's not as pretty as the monarch. It's not as charismatic maybe as the monarch butterfly, but it's just as important to this ecosystem here in Western Minnesota. So that was uh, uh, really the important lesson there. And we're trying to save this bit of pr prairie and maybe we can form back a little bit of a patchwork of that native prairie that once uh, was vast across Western Minnesota in the Dakotas and all the way down to Texas. Yeah, and as we learned yesterday, bull snakes as well, Sven.